The Emirates, 27th of October 2019. With Arsenal drawing 2-2 against London rivals Crystal Palace, captain Granit Xhaka is withdrawn by then-manager Unai Emery to a chorus of jeers. Xhaka cups his ear, says some choice words, rips off his Arsenal top and is straight down the tunnel. Xhaka was dropped from the squad for the subsequent matches, and on the 5th of November 2019, Unai Emery stripped Xhaka of the captaincy, an honour he had only been given a month earlier. Almost every Arsenal fan at the time thought that was that. Xhaka was going to leave the club in the following January window, or he might stick it out till the summer, but he is going. Granit said himself that he had his bags packed and his mind made up, but both Arsenal and Granit Xhaka have come a long way since then. Let's go back. On the 25th of May 2016, a fresh-faced 23-year-old Swiss international named Granit Xhaka was announced as a new player for the Arsenal. In his best English, his fourth language after Albanian, German and French, Granit spoke of his excitement at joining the Gunners. And considering Xhaka was Wenger's second most expensive signing in his entire tenure at the time, there was considerable excitement. Having risen through the ranks at FC Basel, then going on to join Borussia Mönchengladbach, there was some expectation that Xhaka was the answer to that oft-discussed, decade-old Patrick Vieira and Gilberto Silva-shaped hole in Arsenal's midfield. Having missed out on Angolo Conte due to exorbitant agent fee demands, the pressure was on for the young man. But Granit Xhaka is no stranger to pressure. Born in Basel in Switzerland to an Albanian family who had recently moved from Kosovo, his upbringing explains a lot about his character. His father, Rajip, spent three and a half years as a political prisoner in Yugoslavia after protesting against the government in Belgrade. Jacques Senior was let outside once every day whilst in prison for just 10 minutes. Granit says, as his son, the story is something that touches me very deeply. It is really, really in my heart. To describe my dad properly, you have to appreciate the full depth of it. It's so tragic. There have always been silent moments where I've felt he has swallowed something and not spilled out the truth. Maybe it was just too much and he wanted to spare his kids all the grief. Rajip had only been together with Granite's mother, Ellie, for three months before he was imprisoned, but she waited for him for his entire three and a half year sentence. So maybe it's no wonder that his parents, with their willingness to suffer for what they believe in, their loyalty and their principles and love for one another, forge someone like Granite. And Granite says his main inspiration to be a footballer in the first place was his father. He played football himself before he got an injury. He taught me never to give up on anything, to be strong, mentally tough. He was the guy who inspired me the most. Xhaka now lives in Barnet with his wife Leonita and two children, who featured in Arsenal's All or Nothing series. And his brother Torlant still plays for his hometown club, FC Basel. Since signing for Arsenal in 2016, it would be fair to say that Xhaka has had a rocky ride. As well as winning two FA Cups and having his fair share of great moments, he's also seen red five times in Arsenal colours and been a lightning rod for fan criticism as Arsenal's fortunes declined, culminating in that moment against Palace. But over 280 appearances later, he's now Arsenal's second longest serving player, only behind Mohamed Elneny and one of only a handful still at the club to ever make an appearance under the great Arsene Wenger. Granit Xhaka has now made more appearances for Arsenal than Robert Perez, Robin van Persie, Ian Wright, Gilberto Silva, Mesut Ozil and Hector Bellerin. Xhaka's journey from zero to hero has been beautiful to see, but why was he so criticised to begin with and why has it taken us so long to get to this point? Firstly, timing. Xhaka has happened to play through a significant era of relative turmoil and instability in Arsenal's history. Having played for three permanent managers, including through the failed Emery project, through Wenger's decline and through a rebuild under Mikel, He's seen the likes of Usmanov, Gazidis, Sanyehi and more all come and go, and inevitably, the results on the pitch have suffered. He has, perhaps infamously, never qualified for the Champions League with Arsenal. He played in it in his first season and has then been part of teams that finished 5th, 6th, 5th, 8th, 8th again and 5th last campaign. Ultimately, in terms of personnel, there's only a few common denominators and one of them is Xhaka. For me, Xhaka also suffers due to his position on the pitch. If a goalkeeper chucks them in week in, week out, it's clear he's underperforming. If a striker is scoring a goal a game, then they stay in the team regardless. But for a midfielder, someone who does crucial, yet what I would call intermediate value work, things like progressive passing, winning second balls and duels, and providing pre-assists, their work, good or bad, can easily be undervalued or ignored. It's easy to be caught up in results-based analysis, and it's harder to judge whether Xhaka is any good in any given game in surface-level mainstream conversation, as his specific role isn't so judged on moments or output, so perhaps inevitably, he's an easy target, especially given his character when Arsenal aren't doing well as a collective. And his steely and determined persona has to be channeled in a positive way, or it has come out in moments of anger and red mist. His disciplinary record is often under scrutiny, but Xhaka has not been sent off since 2021 in Arsenal's 5-0 loss to Man City. Now, now, Arsenal's red card record this season is spotless. It feels like the better Arsenal do, Xhaka becomes less under the microscope, and so his discipline is less of an easy talking point. Furthermore, it's no coincidence that Xhaka's stock is high when Arsenal are doing well. For me, 
Xhaka is like Mercury. He responds to the temperature of the room. When Arsenal are doing poorly, he's angry, moody, and off and off his game. When Arsenal are doing well, you can bet Xhaka is too. He needs the right environment in which he can thrive, and it's taken this long to get there. He's also not always been the player he is now. He's been rash in the challenge, positionally suspect, and certainly had games that have completely passed him by. Now though, Granit Xhaka is crucial for Arsenal. If you want in-depth analysis of how Granit Xhaka's role at Arsenal has changed over his seven years, then check out the bonus content of this video on Patreon or by clicking join on the channel, where you'll get that and loads of other benefits. Every season, fans want to retire him to find that upgrade to Granit Xhaka. I think it could happen this summer, and I think Rice is the man to do it. But I thought he could be upgraded every single summer since he got here, and he hasn't been. And there's a reason every single Arsenal manager has used and trusted him since day one. He has limitations, of course, specifically in his turning circle, final third work, and one-footedness, but Xhaka is one of our most important players for a number of key facets to our play. Firstly, ball progression. Xhaka makes 7.82 progressive passes per 90, putting him in the top 8% of midfielders in Europe for that stat. He's also often high ranking in our XG numbers. And when you consider where he plays most of his football and the fact he's been more advanced this season than previous seasons, that is a seriously impressive number of progressive passes. Our creative hub, Martin Odegaard, now the best midfielder in the league, according to some on Sky Sports, and a player who tends to drop a lot deeper, is only marginally higher on 7.9 progressive passes per 90. For comparison, Gabriel Magalhaes makes 4.18 per 90 and Celine Lieber makes 3.89 progressive passes per 90. Xhaka is also hugely important in facilitating our wide rotations on the left, owing to his comfortability in a number of zones. We've seen Xhaka drop in as a third centre-back in seasons gone by. Now he tends to drift a bit higher and wider to allow Zinchenko and Martinelli space, and is also improving at getting beyond and into the box as he plays a more advanced role this season. His qualities in our 4-4-2 block next to Thomas Partey are also seriously important. He carries out instructions to the nth degree, a very intelligent and important footballer. This is a graphic that shows the player with the highest expected threat per zone of the pitch in the Premier League this season. If you're unfamiliar, expected threat increases if a player makes a pass which moves the ball from a place where it is less likely for their team to score to a place where they are more likely to score. Arsenal have the highest expected threat numbers on their left-hand side in the left half space, exactly where Granit Xhaka plays. He is part of facilitating that threat and his ability to provide the platform for others by being the wall pass, pinning defenders, or just simply getting the ball to them is criminally underrated. But for me, Xhaka's superpower is picking up second balls. As outlined in one of my previous videos, Arsenal's press and its structure has been the real star of the season for me, and it relies on having dominant, big space defenders who can recover the ball when Arsenal force teams long. And Xhaka is the king of getting the ball back. He's like a hoover. There's so many times where Gabriel and Saliba will go in for a challenge and Jack will be there to pick the ball up and get us forward. It's an incredibly underrated skill. And it doesn't come up on the data particularly well as Arsenal often have so much more of the ball than their opponent. So Xhaka is simply contesting less duels. But watch and you'll see he's rarely beaten when it comes to second balls. But perhaps Xhaka's most impressive ability is simply his availability. Granit Xhaka has never made less than 27 league appearances for Arsenal in a single season, and has played over 31 league games in five out of his seven seasons at the club. I imagine he'll go on to make that six in seven later this year. His injury record is terrific for a player in his position and role, missing just 28 games in seven years for Arsenal, an average of four games a season. However, there's an elephant in the room, and something I haven't mentioned up till now. The catalyst for all of this impressive work from Xhaka. Try and watch this clip without breaking into a smile of huge pride. Who gave you the strength when even your family were being targeted to, to keep on? What made you believe in Arsenal and turning it around? There was one guy, his name is Mikel Arteta. This man, Mikel Arteta, is the key to Xhaka's turnaround. He has built a structure on and off the pitch to allow Xhaka to thrive and Xhaka knows it. On the pitch, Mikel exaggerates his best qualities, gives him leadership space and hands him the structure to play his best football. Off the pitch, he's surrounding Xhaka with similarly driven and like-minded individuals and bringing the club more in line with what Xhaka might view as the principles he tries to embody and what he says he learned from his father. Hard work, determination and belief. There is a reason Xhaka can't be retired just yet and that's because the system is built around him. Look at Mikel's first lineup for Arsenal. Only Xhaka and Saka remain as the real first team names. And those two are significant to me. Saka is a generational talent. It's obvious why he's still there. But Xhaka brings us something else. He isn't at Saka's talent level, but he brings us a platform for others to shine. An energy, an identity, a captain without the armband, a leader in spirit. There has never been an image of Arsenal under Mikel Arteta that hasn't included Granit Xhaka somewhere. And we have benefited hugely from his presence.
Granit Xhaka has made mistakes, and he is limited technically when you compare him to the best football players in the world. But the problem for Xhaka has never really been talent, and in my view, the temperament problem has only been exaggerated by external circumstances. His red cards often come in high-stake games, or games when Arsenal were already doing poorly. The key has always been environment. Vieira could only be Vieira because he had Gilberto Silva next to him, Campbell and Torre behind him, and Henri and Bergkamp in front of him. Mikel has given Xhaka the tools to win football matches. Now we've given Jacker what he needs around him and off the pitch, we've unlocked his next level, and the fans are really warming to him. For a man who's fairly traditionally masculine, given leadership roles right from a young age, the youngest sibling, yet the one with the key to the house, it's clear Jacker is used to feeling valued and loved. It's important for everyone, but I think it's especially important for Jacker. And in a young team, they need him. It took him six years, but he finally got a chance away at Bournemouth this season. Jacker is intense, but he cares. We all know people like him in real life, and he has principles whether you like them or not. And one of them is to give everything for what he believes in. Albeit with different stakes, his father did something comparable. When that can be channeled properly, you have an incredible footballer. Unbelievably, considering where we were in October 2019, if we do go on to win the league this season, then Xhaka may be seen as a great of the Emirates era.